Welcome to the Bums Corner Coast to Coast podcast. The views and opinions expressed in this show are those of the hosts and are not those of Bums Corner Media Enterprises. This program contains strong language. Listener discretion is advised. Listen at your own risk. God, I hate this game. have an X-Files vibe to it, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I lo- it was the um, that, that coast-to-coast tie-in that we had. That, uh, oh, yeah. I, I love that music. So that, that, yeah, Roy, Art Bell. Yeah, like, yeah. This is 1230 on a Friday night. You're driving oh, home, listening to Art Bell. Right. You're on your, your, your second bottle of No-Dos. <laughs> Halfway through Nebraska. Actually, Illinois. by the time I was listening, Art Bell was usually out. And it was somebody that had co-opted the show for that month because yeah. he was like somewhere in Montana. He's, yeah. Like chasing Mothman or whatever bullshit they do. But hey, welcome. Hi, Institutionalized. everybody. Institutionalized. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Welcome. This is the 57th running of the Bums Corner Coast to Coast podcast, which means we're uh, we're coming up on five years of this show. Yeah. Like February. Six, yeah. February is when we started five years ago. So my um, Facebook memories popped up the illegal picture of Bob Dylan that Al took at the concert a few weeks ago. Yeah. That triggered this whole thing. This entire project that we've been working on started basically that night. Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, like the the Facebook memories showed up. And it was like five years ago, Bob Dylan show and, you know, wherever we were, that little put on college. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what started this. Yeah. That in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here we are. Five years later, yeah. Almost. Which again, well, five years from that show. Every every month, I, I reiterated that I'm still blown away that we haven't just quit <laughs> <laughs> because that's very on brand. <laughs> it, it really is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, let's let's go head first into something. All in. Mm-hmm. Spend an exorbitant amount of money of and. On yeah. money and time on it, and then realize we're in way over our heads. And this was not a good idea. And, and back out, but yeah. this it it's got some staying power. It it does, mm-hmm. and I think it's it's we we've learned from our history. Sure. of of yeah, going you know all all in <laughs> right. from from the get go. Yes, we baby stepped our way. Yes, in a, in a, the, 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 the threshold of five every years. once in a while, one of us will get a, a wild hair about let's let's take this and oh, make it. Let's like, do this. Yeah, you know we we have one tiny podcast lion. Let's get the other four lions and make a giant podcast Voltron. Yes, and, and then we slowly talk ourselves off that cliff because again, that's yeah. what it's that that uh, scope creep is what we call it at work. Like you start that's, a project. Yep. And all of a sudden, you just start tacking on all these different things that don't belong there. Yeah, like it's, this is not at all right. What the original yeah. project or plan you, was you for? You get somebody else in, like Peggy or Rockwell, and we mm-hmm. get some new juice going. All of a sudden, like, oh, we could do this every night, you know? Yeah. Oh, it'll be yeah. great. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but it um, won't be great. It won't be great at it all. It won't. It'll be bad. <laughs> It'll sound great, right, as an idea, uh-huh. but not good in your ear. Oh yeah, conceptually, as a, as a it's all good. Yeah. And again, I think um, a lot of it has to do with like the we don't like. Yeah, it is a good idea, and yes, we could pull it off. Sure, if it was the only thing we did, a hundred percent. I'll tell you what: if we were single and underemployed, yeah. probably, yeah. yeah. Like, if we were sitting around every night at 7 o'clock anyways, why not turn on a recorder? Mm-hmm. But, no. I think we've hit, like, the perfect time commitment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like an hour a month, solid. No, That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> perfect. Um, it, it is. and I, But, you know, it's, it's not to say that we can't make improvements with, you know, some, some within-scope improvements. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. improvements. That's not the right word. 
tweaks. Yeah, absolutely. We well, I mean, if you think we can back, pl- we can play within the, within the, within the confines of, yes, of, of the sandbox that we've established. As, as long as we we keep in the sandbox and not say we have a sandbox, why not a beach? And, right. and keep going yeah. from there. But yeah, I mean, if you listen to. And I don't recommend doing it, but like the first couple episodes, yeah. this is a completely different animal that we have now. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. it, it's been organic, not like there's been, an- let's do a 180 and, you know, go off on this tangent. You know, it's no. little, it's little changes that we've no. made here and there. I think a lot of it is, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it started off as something. It got really big and nebulous. Right. As we tried to, to branch yeah. off into other things. Yep. And, and then we, so kind of refocused, yeah. refocused it to what we are now, right? Which is yeah, yeah. Just a couple hanging out, of, shooting the shit. A couple of old buddies drinking yeah. beer and mm-hmm. shooting the shit, yeah, making fun of people oh, <laughs> who make fun. bad choices right? on the news. So one of the fun things over the past few episodes is like, if you listen back to the stuff from last year, the summer, like we would catch up. Like, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? But now what's cool is like we're doing the same things. Yeah. And that's fun. Like, just last night, yeah. <laughs> um, we went to the opening night of Wicked at Studio 35 on yeah. Indianola. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we kind of talked about it before the show, but it, honestly, I think it was a great way to see the show because it was a, a very eclectic crowd. It was mostly... One mom, I'd say, for every four little girls. Yeah. About that ratio. Because yeah. if you looked out over the audience, there were two other guys there. Like, about four rows up. Yeah. And the rest of it was moms and little girls. Which, right. kudos to the moms. Because that, it's wrangling yeah. little girls, especially feral ones, at a yeah. movie on a Friday night with their friends, all dressed up as witches. Yep. That, that's hard work. So, yeah. kudos. It was, and it, honestly, they were all well behaved. Yes. I will notice, I will, will say that, that at about the time that I started getting antsy, they did, they did too. <laughs> Which was funny because, like, I noticed it, like, Sarah noticed it, I'm like, I'm tired of sitting. It's been like two hours. I'm done. I'm like, yeah, so, so are these three. And that one. And over there. Like, we're all starting to squirm. Right. <laughs> like, all right, finale's got to be code because I got to get up. Yeah, and uh, I'm not familiar enough with the the musical. Right. So yeah, I couldn't keep either. track in my head, like, how, how deep in are we? Yeah. You know, I was trying to do the math. Like, every once in a while, I'd glance at my clock. I'm like, all right, it's 7.45. If it's a 6.30 movie that's two and a half hours long, yeah. and we had 20 minutes of previews, how much is left? I had no idea until it ended. But honestly... Yeah. Um, you may think differently, but it didn't feel like a two hour and forty minute movie to me. It didn't. By the time like I said, by the time I started getting antsy, was it about that two hour mark? Okay. Um, and yeah, up until then, I was like, okay. Yeah. And then, like about twenty minutes out, is when you could kind of see the, the ramp up, right? Oh, okay, finale time's coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming because these are things are happening. Right. Okay, this is you know. It, it hits those milestones, those mile markers in the storytelling. Okay, we're hitting the day. We're, 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 yes. We're, we're uh, increasing. We're getting there. That's we're, a good we're point. We're headed towards the end of Act One. Yes. Yes. And it ended Act One spectacularly. Yes. And, and that is a good point. It was very nebulous before that. But the yeah. second they started, like that trajectory, mm-hmm. it was painfully obvious. Like, yeah. There was one scene. All right, I can do that. I don't have to get up and pee again. I know exactly how much time we have left now. Yep. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you, up until a certain point, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I could miss any of this. Yep. Because it's, meh, story-wise. Right. Um, but after about, you know, a certain point, right. it's like, no, get your ass in the chair because this, <laughs> yeah. is where, this is where the ride starts. Right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, and again, tell you what, I, I'm not familiar at all with the, the books. I, I have no idea about the musical. I, I knew Defying Gravity just because it was a huge song years ago. Yeah. But I was blown away. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was a really, really good movie. It was. And again, I, I, I've got to say, I, I did not see the theatrical release. Of Les Miserables, mm-hmm. 
Um, I did not see the theatrical release of Phantom of the Opera. Okay. So I don't know how they typically do it. Right. I know they don't do it in two parts. <laughs> you don't come back. The intermission will be one year. I, I know <laughs> that typically they, they've not, or historically they have not done a two and a half hour <laughs> musical in a four hour. Right. You know, <laughs> see you next year for act two. Sort right. Of, and it did. It, it, the movie itself drug. Like, you could tell they were really padding things. Yes. It turned to me. Like, yeah. There's a lot of extraneous stuff. Yep. Um, and there it is. I mean, yeah, I've got, I, I'm not going to make any excuse for it. Right. Except that they were, it's, it's a money grab. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. And uh, I guess I'll have to wait and see what's left. You know, how much is mm-hmm. in part two that could it have been edited down? To a three-hour movie? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, as we were leaving, like we were waiting outside, um, somebody in the group said that the actual the musical was two hours long. Right. So yes, that there was a lot added to it. Yeah. But again, it I don't know. Just the pacing was good enough that it didn't feel like it. You know, I, it, and, and it, plus it, the music, it, it, it like I think you said earlier, nothing grabbed you, but at the same time. Like when when you'd hear the the music, the instrument starting, you're like, "Oh Christ, another song!" I didn't have that feeling. I'm like, "Oh, oh no, it's no. going to be another song." I, I, you know, I, I welcomed when the music would start. Yeah, because I'm like, "Oh, thank God, something's going to happen. <laughs> the scene's going to be over." <laughs> well, yeah, like, "Oh, good, they're going to shut up and start doing something musical, right?" Because um, <laughs> that's kind of what I was expecting was, right. you know, a musical. Uh, that said, you know, it was, you know, I hate to say it, my, my biggest takeaway of the, of the entire thing, like, none of the songs grab me. Right. I mean, Define Gravity, but that's like the big song anyways. But right. Like, it wasn't that great. I don't know what it was 20 years ago. I don't remember it from then. Right. Um, I wasn't paying attention to Wicked 20 years ago when it came out on Broadway. The one thing I noticed was there, um, the people in the theater that were familiar with mm-hmm. the material, they, they only got like two or three rounds of applause during the movie. Yeah. You know, if, if you yeah. see other yeah. musical movies like uh, Rent, okay, mm-hmm. if you saw that in the theater, there was applause after every single song. Yeah. You know? As it should be, right. as a musical person, as a yeah. you know, uh, right in high school, because I was you know just that you know, uh, no, um, as a, someone who has appreciated musical theater for a long time, okay, let me, I'll, I'll phrase it that way, nerd. <sighs> um, <laughs> yeah, like that's what you go to yes. the theater for. Yes, that's what theater people expect to see on film. Fair, fair. I didn't. Ex- I didn't experience that. Right in this movie, and, and again, the, the 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 super fans didn't either. I mean, it yeah. ended up just very isolated opening night in a very small theater in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, they they were happy it was happening, but again, yeah. you did not get that thunderous applause after every single number. And I, again, I'm not familiar with the actual musical, mm-hmm. um, but based on the music that I heard in the movie. None of it would have evoked any kind of reaction like yeah. that. It was kind of it's a lackluster soundtrack. Okay, I'll I'll Com- agree with you. You know, yeah. Compared to like a Rent or a Les Misérables or a, right. a Phantom or a Miss Saigon, I mean oh, Miss Saigon. God, there's just, okay. Or even, shit, even Chess. <laughs> I mean, God, I'll give you Chess. <laughs> Got some great songs in chess. Fucking Murray head. Dude. <laughs> you know, it's like, give me something to... Yes. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I didn't I didn't wake up today with anything stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. Or like, ooh, I want to hop on Spotify and track down the song they were singing in the library or bullshit like that. You know, just... Yeah. It, it happened, and then I was done. 
like, oh, I'll be back next year. You know, there, yeah. I won't be running out to buy the soundtrack or anything of this no. sort or pick this up on DVD when it comes out or yeah. anything like that. So, um, it's funny, I, you know, not to slam on chess, it was a great musical. <laughs> I love chess. In fact, like on the regular songs from chess that aren't Murray Head. <laughs> Other than songs, other than One Night in Bangkok, will regularly pop into my head. I have it at, at home. least once a week on vinyl. Actually, I'll yeah. get a, a song from Chess in my head. Yep, it's a great one to throw on when I'm home alone and I know that I'm doing nothing for the next hour. I'll, yeah. I'll throw that album on. Yeah. It's fucking phenomenal. It's a great. Yeah. talk about somebody like yeah. It was just such a. It will never stand the test of time. Like Mm-mm. I'm sure people nowadays, you know, most have no idea right it doesn't relate to anything you, that anybody you knows like that you couldn't re-release that right now no 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 like there's no comparable you, you couldn't uh, adapt that to anything no absolutely not that exists in current events but it was a creature of the time yeah yeah well done but it was fun I mean and again it was a great evening and kudos oh, to Studio yeah. 35 man they 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 take watching a movie and turn it into an event. They really do a great job. You know, that. and it, I mean, if you think back to 30 years ago when we went there in our 20s, mm-hmm. it wasn't that, you know, it was, it was sort of a, a rundown theater. I liked it because we could smoke in there. Yeah. That you was like, smoke, you, you get could a beer. get a beer. They didn't card. That was the appeal of it. It was cheap as shit too. Yeah. And they had the, you know, like the little tiny theater seats, mm-hmm. but it, it's renovated. They they've got a full bar in there. They put a pizza oven upstairs, yeah. and it's fantastic pizza. Oh god, I've never had a bad pie in that. Joint. No, and um, yeah. every week I say maybe every week, but every time we go in, there's a new specialty pizza too. Yeah. Like sort of loosely based on a new release movie. Yeah, at least named after. Yeah. Gordon. And every one of them has been a home run. Yeah. Which is great. Um, and yeah, you're spot on. You remember the last time I went there, I forget what I saw. Um, but it was, you know, early 90s maybe. <laughs> and it was. It was, you know, kind of a rundown hey, yeah. ticket. And it was kind of cool because like the coolest thing was is that it was an old neighborhood theater. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. It wasn't AMC. No, yeah. It was like, okay, we're just getting a good old-fashioned theater experience. Get your tickets. Right. Sit down. The ticket taker was in the little booth on the sidewalk. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. 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 You bought your tickets outside. Outside. <laughs> yeah. You got your ticket. You went in. Um, and you passed by the concessionaire, and you went into the theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, last movie I saw there before the renovation was uh, Reality Bites. I don't know, early 90s? I want to, 92, yeah. 93? Does that sound about right? 90. Maybe mid 90s? I don't know. Whatever. That was the last movie I saw there. 94? That could be. Um, but, but again, until the renovation, I, you yeah. know, I sort of, they fell off my radar after that. But then the, the Renaissance, when they, they've rebuilt it, it's yeah. beautiful inside. They've got a fantastic, we have yet to be able to sit at the bar because it's always crowded. But, yeah. It's just, it's incredible. Every beer tasting we go to there, it's an event. Like, the entire theater is there for one thing, and it's to have a great time. <laughs> and it's so, so much fun. Beer tastings are <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm always impressed. The the, the, the folks, the, the, the guy that, I forget the guy's name. Yeah, I, I, I do too, every time. But the guy that is, is the primary, you know, master of ceremonies for that is... is uh, you know, r- remarkably knowledgeable, right? About <laughs> every you know serving that is that is yes. gold out. Yes. Um, so yeah, there there's there is knowledge of of the beer. So you're you know, it's not just we're gonna you know drink a bunch of beer and then watch a movie. It's like no, there's you know, and again, it's but it, it's not a trip to you know the beer museum, right? It, you know, you're not going to school, but it's it's such a fun, unique. It, it, honestly, they're like the, it is the most Columbus, Ohio thing <laughs> I could have ever dreamt of. You know, nowhere else <laughs> are, you, are you gonna find something like that? 
Uh, um, counterpoint on if you're heading west on Henderson Road, okay, and you've passed Olentangy River Road and you're going up the hill towards like Kenny, okay. Remember, DeSantis Flores was on your left hand side. Yeah, it was that dead man's left turn. Yes, but on the right hand side, there was like that giant racquetball building. I've never been inside it, I don't know what it is, but it's like gray. And it's yeah. almost directly opposite of the floral shop. Can you picture it in your head? Yep. Okay. So now that is a giant pickleball building full of pickleball courts. And to me, that is the most Columbus thing that we we put it indoors in a giant gray box, which I'm all for because that's in, and I'm using bunny ears. That sport is loud as fuck and annoying so to keep them in a box i'm all for but that's very columbus those people need to be contained they do no um it's <laughs> not no that is like that's a very like i can see that in palm springs yeah yes outside no <laughs> palm Springs with a removable roof oh okay that's fair this is a warehouse full of pickle ballers. Is that what they're called? Pickle ball gags? I, I don't. I don't know the the nomenclature. Pickle ballers, change approved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to work. Okay, but yes, um, Studio Thirty Five, the, the beer tastings. It, it's it's super Midwest, hundred yeah. percent. But again. Um, but there are a lot of assholes in this city, but oh, yeah. there's something about those that everybody, again, that it's just a, a very, very chill atmosphere. It is a cool cross section yes. of Columbus. I mean, it's, it's, it's that. there's a lot of weirdos in that room, but yeah, everybody there is just, they're there to have a good time and, and just hang out, drink way too much beer for a Ooh. Sunday afternoon yeah, and then watch a movie together. Yep. So. I'm all yeah. for them. But counterpoint, though, that is a lot of beer. And I can ah. only maybe once a month, one, every other month or so, I can do one of those. But they're, they're just, they're hard on the body, dude. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit, at my age, even being in a dark room for four solid hours kind of hurts my soul. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a newness that could that, be that has invigorated my ability to. Yes, and see when um, when we discovered it, Cocaine Bear, I think, was the first one we went to, and okay. we went to that. We're like, this is a blast! So we went to all of them. Ah, uh, and at the end of that that little period, like maybe two or three months in, we're like, we need to straddle back. You know, mm. this this is starting to hurt. Like permanent damage. Type oh, stuff. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, like maybe once a quarter, once every other month or so, I can jump in. But yeah, but being like three hundred ounces of beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on top of it's not replacing <laughs> it's, my normal weekly allotment. Right, yeah, it's on top see, of. See, that's the thing. You have to make the allowances. Oh uh, no, I'm not willing to. Yeah, me either. <laughs> no quarter. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Usually, I'll I'll show up and have you know get the Bloody Mary before. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. drinking like you on drink top before. of it. Yeah. You drink all these extra beers like for twenty. I think that that memory came up of when we used to do the Century Club and you'd have mm. a side beer going mm-hmm. for the fifty nine seconds before you, <laughs> you did a shot, so you could drink. <laughs> so you could chase your beer shot with a swig. <laughs> Because he got bored. Yeah. <laughs> In 59 seconds. In 59 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same concept, though. Yes, we yeah. we go there super early to get one of the better seats, mm-hmm. and then we drink the entire time waiting for them to serve us beer. Start. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think... You're, we've been doing it correctly ex- with with we need to add an extra pizza interesting like a backup pizza yeah okay like halfway yeah. through the movie kind of pizza or just it, yeah like eat a shitload like, before you get there okay start drinking order a pizza yeah 
And then before the actual, like, finish off the pizza before the beer tasting starts. Okay. But you've got another pizza. Wow. Okay. So you've got a pizza to munch on during the beer tasting and into the film. Wow. Shit. And that the bread would absorb. The bread absorbs. All yeah. of the, those fucking lagers and, and IPAs that you just drank. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. I can see that. That's a good one because we're going back in two weeks to see Elf. Yeah. It's sold out. Yeah. It, like fast. It's going to be nuts. So it's one of those get there way fucking early. I want to get there way fucking early because the the back three rows are the only ones with tables. So like, I, how do you do that without a table? <laughs> I don't know if I can see a movie now without a table. I know. Uh, we're so pampered. <laughs> Last night, we, we didn't make it. Like, uh, I don't know. I blinked or something. And all of a sudden, they opened the doors and all these little girls rushed us. It that was, was hard. hilarious. Yeah. You're like, doors open, doors open. We went, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's like, what's happening? I'm like, I don't know. Grab your shit. Get We're your shit. Go. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, like a, a pizza in my mouth. I got a beer. I'm like, we got to go. Just grab, leave the coats. It's fine. We'll buy more. <laughs> Yeah, we failed miserably. We were like five rows in. So, um, but yeah, then you have to watch a movie in the dark mm-hmm. with a pizza on your lap and try and eat popcorn. Like, yeah. Not easy. Not easy at yeah, all. It was really awkward. I remember, yeah, because like I had my beer in the, in that little cup holder. And I, well, Sarah and I were on the wrong sides. We usually sit differently. Oh, okay. Uh, See, she's usually on your she's right. She's usually on my right. I'm like, I usually yeah. have the popcorn. I, I get you. Okay. So last she had the popcorn last it night? Reversed. It was all very awkward. You were cattywampus. I was cattywampus. We we were <laughs> collectively catty, a collective cattywampusness. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, we'll, um, Elf, I plan on being there like super early. Yeah. I will not fail again. Yeah, It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. And again, that's one of those movies that half drunk. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like that's honestly. But you know, I don't know if this is going to lose us listeners. Um, that's like the only movie that I really like Will Ferrell in. However, I will say I've not seen Anchorman. And as a broadcaster, I know that's that's old a school. Sin. Old school. Yeah. You didn't like him in that, or have you not seen it? I've not seen old school. Okay. With John Lovitz? No. Oh, that's when he goes to prison. No. What the hell? College. I don't know. Okay, try it old school. Just watch it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. He's hilarious because he's a he's a side character, so you don't have to focus on Will he's Ferrell. He's great as a side character. Yes. And in this, he's fucking hilarious because the whole point is like, there's all all these buddies in like their thirties, right? And one of the guys breaks up with his girlfriend. Rents a house on campus, and his buddies who are like married and settled mm-hmm. turn it into their party house. Nice, and they turn well, it into a fraternity. So they have all these college kids now hanging out there, uh, uh, and then these guys in their thirties that are just there to get fucked up. And so Will Ferrell has been that's like something we would do. Yes, it, and I think that's why I like that movie so much. Like I know all these people. Yeah. But Will Ferrell's character was like the crazy college guy. And then he, he tampered himself down, settled, got married. But having this, this conduit reignited all that. So he turns into Frank the Tank, the character from his 20s. <laughs> and it, he is just hilarious in that. Just hilarious. Okay. So, He's brilliant as a side character. Oh, yes. But... As, as far as being like the, the main, main character, no, he's terrible. No, because he he's funny, but I don't think he's funny enough to carry. Yeah, he's not like that. two hours funny. No, he's funny in in nuggets. But Elf, Elf is different. Elf is different. Elf yeah. is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> that is one of the funniest movies. Yes, because he just runs with that character yeah. too. Yeah, just it's insane what he does with it. Um, and it, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, next month mm-hmm. as we recap our elf experience. Yes. But I, I, I recall seeing or hearing uh, interviews about that, the making of that, that movie. Um, 
like so much of the ad libs. Yeah. And it was one of those, yeah, we have a script. Okay, go ahead and shoot your way. Go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> right. Like, so much of the, okay, go ahead and do your thing. Right. Made it into the, into the, into oh, the movie. Oh, I bet. I uh, bet. John Favreau. It's a John Favreau film. Yeah. One of his early ones. Um, ooh, I think it's great. <clears throat> yeah, but that's what, like a two, two weeks away from today. It's a Saturday one. Yeah, it's a Saturday one. It's kind of throwing us. <sighs> yeah. Which is actually not bad because... Yes. We have a recovery day. Yeah. April 10, yes. Um, the other two showings were at 7 p.m. And and again, this is a 1 o'clock show we're going to. And for two hours, you drink beer. Mm-hmm. And then they show the movie two hours after it starts. So <laughs> theoretically, Friday night, you would get there... The the beer drinking would start at seven. Elf would start at nine. So you'd get out of there at eleven. Wasted. Yeah, no. Bad idea. I like the feeling of leaving the movie, opening those doors, and the sun hits you right in the eyes. You're yeah. like, what are you doing? You're you're so drunk. Yeah. And it's the middle of the day. But it's late enough where I can't just go home and nap mm-hmm. because I won't be able to sleep. Right. So I have to I have to do my Sunday half in the bag. And I love that. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. You know, like, ah, oh, I have to clean the toilet. Like, eh, it'll be all right. You know, like there's the music is just blasting in the house. Fucking ska is just like shaking the, yes. the walls. <laughs> And all I'm thinking is, like, I cannot wait to get in bed. <laughs> Sundays were made for the specials. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can rationalize listening to them. <laughs> At that volume. Yes. I'm like, I need a horn section today. Just, I need it. I need white people reggae. <laughs> Two-tone. <laughs> it was mm. representation. <laughs> um yeah, you know, the, someone needs to write a, a song, a, a a counter to the brilliant Sunday morning coming down. Hmm. Okay. About Sunday evening <laughs> being buzzed. Sobering up so you can go to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you're powerless. I mean, none of my usual tools work. I can't drink coffee. I can't nap. I have nothing. Yeah, it throws all the things off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm half drunk, and I have like this four-hour window and before I can do anything about it. Yeah. So I just I ride the buzz. I love, and I know I'm going to sound like an alcoholic saying this, but I love day drinking. I'm a big fan. Just like... It, I don't do it... As, not enough, you know? I, I, I never... Yeah, anymore. but there's something like, like every back in the once day, in a while. Oh, yeah. God. Like still, Saturday, yeah. after, you go out to lunch with your buddies on a Saturday. You pound mm-hmm. a few drinks, and then all of a sudden you realize, like, it's 1.30, mm-hmm. and I'm buzzing pretty good. Mm-hmm. And I have no responsibilities for the rest of the day. Yeah, my biggest to-do is vacuum. <laughs> so you can either disco nap and drink again later, or... You just ride that wave and just, like, I'm going to stay half drunk all yeah. day. I'm going to maintain. Yes. See, that's a thing. That's, that's, that's what, what separates the experience from the novice. Right. Is, well, I'm going to just keep drinking. You've got to strategically. Yes. Absolutely. Imbibe. Yes. So that you don't just pass out by 630. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. you got to. It's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, and it's got to be done thoughtfully. You've got to you really got to know yourself. As a, <laughs> if not, you know, if if in no other way, right? You've got to uh, understand how alcohol affects you. Yes. Oh, yes. And you know, honestly, like I, I'm more open to do things if, if I reach that plateau early in the day. You know, oh, yeah. like. It's ninety eight percent yes. If you call yes, you call me. Yeah, right. if if some random Saturday you call me at three o'clock, like I want to go antique shopping. I'm like, have a great time, enjoy yourself. Yeah, because I'm not leaving this house. But yeah. if we're out day drinking, you say I want to go antiquing. Like you know what? Yeah, 
let's go blow some cash. Yeah. <laughs> I need something ridiculous for the 1900s. <laughs> yes. And let's stop at an arcade on the way. Oh. Because I want to play pinball and yeah. then buy a desk. Is is there a, like a, some sort of old mill <laughs> we could look at? <laughs> Are there sheep we could watch? <laughs> <laughs> just random shit. Yes. Like, ah, oh, is it planetarium? Oh, no, no. I'll fall asleep. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy, it may sound like a good idea. Right. <laughs> Don't do it. Yes. Let's go to Kosai. <laughs> Don't get sucked into the Kosai. Mm. Franklin Park, yes. Mm. Kosai, not so much. Yeah. Okay, I can no. see that. Kosai, yeah. Yeah. I see, I get wrapped up in the planetarium thing. E, yeah, no. Bad idea. Shit, even like that, the, the pendulum in the foyer oh, would... Is it still there? Yeah. I think I would focus on that for a good solid hour or two. And well, if we're high, so. yeah. Yeah. No, I don't like leaving the house when I'm not, when I'm high. Yeah. Terrible idea. I... Hmm. But live and learn. Exactly. Okay. Indeed. So let's see. So we, we've mapped out our, our pop culture for the week. Um, is it time to hit the news? I don't know. What are we at? You need, you, you need another one? No, I'm good. You're yeah. sure? Yeah. All right. Well, you, get, you know. There are no other. We, we've drank well, ourselves. I, dr- we, could, we could hit pause and I can go grab Yeah, we're okay. We'll make it. All right. Yeah. We, we'll do the news, we'll do the weather, and then we'll make sure you're comfortable. Out. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're a very hospitable you're host. I appreciate house. that. I'm make sure you're taken no, care I'm of. Good. All your needs are met. Studio A is very accommodating to my needs. I, I, we don't, we try. <laughs> I will fill out a card on my way out. Thank okay. You. We appreciate that. <laughs> All right. And, and with that, on to the news. I'm still looking for a better sound. It doesn't suck. It's not bad. <laughs> it's a good plateau. Yeah. So we both picked really short articles um, this week. This one struck me because, on, honestly, I think whoever wrote this missed out on a really good pun. So let me share it with you. Um, man robs liquor store wearing a shower curtain. The hunt is on for a man who robbed a Lincoln, Nebraska liquor store on Tuesday while wearing a hoodie. A mask and a shower curtain over his body, according to ABC affiliate KN, KL, KN, TV. The suspect allegedly pointed a gun at an employee and fled with an unknown amount of money, according to police. Police have recovered the shower curtain, but the thief is still at large. Anyone with information is asked to call police or Crime Stoppers and bring the curtain down on this bizarre robbery. Dun, dun. See, they, they did okay with the pun. Yeah, they tried. But. Decent effort. In hindsight, they should have gone with. Police have recovered the shower curtain, but the thief made a clean getaway. Right. And that was, it's funny you picked up on that because I did, I, 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 I actually went to the actual site too. Really? Yeah, they, 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 uh, Nebraska, KT, uh, KLKN. Did they catch it? Um, it, the, 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 it's funny because the they made a point to say <laughs> that uh, oh shoot the shower curtain oh later on officers recovered the shower curtain mm, okay <laughs> oh oh thank God <laughs> <laughs> well, I can sleep now. <laughs> But, uh, but again, like I, I love reading these, trying to put myself in that person's head, like like a very terrible sequel to being John Malkovich. Like I just want to ride around and this dude, like I a hundred percent understand the mask and the hoodie. Yeah. Why the shower curtain? Right. You know. Well, and that's the thing. Like, okay, so. <laughs> You got the hoodie and the mat. Like, where do you find a shower curtain? Like, it's not like it's just like a round. It's not like there's, there's like a, like a, you know, like a newspaper, you know, 
<laughs> like a sharp curtain vending machine. Yeah, there's like a, oh shit, there's a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Not just around. Like, was he carrying it around the shower curtain? He's like, well, shit. Like, look at a mask. Like, oh, hey, I'll do you one better. Right? Go big or go home? Like, what do we... So, and again, like, as I was trying to get into this guy's heads, the only thing I could think of was the, um, it, if, if you're paranoid enough and you don't want to be identified by all the cameras around, Mm-hmm. Something reflective to to right. throw off. Yeah, you know the the imagery would work, but yeah. You know, but again, but. that that was secondary to clean getaway. That's all I wanted out of this. Like it, it <laughs> I had a need and it is satisfied. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, looking at the picture. Okay, so yeah, they allude to or they state that man is wearing a hoodie. A mask in a shower curtain. He was not wearing like a Halloween mask, right? Yeah, like he's a wearing COVID mask. A COVID mask. Yeah. All right. So now we were at the the point in history where we have to differentiate. Sure. Between like what kind of mask is it? And it's not just are you wearing a. So we have to make sure that we right. are, are an Obama aware. mask. Yeah. Are you wearing right. a Nixon mask? <laughs> Or an Obama mask. No, it's a, it's a COVID mask. Um, so, yeah, because otherwise, yeah, because initially I was like, well, dude, how much more, in, you know, yeah, right? <laughs> how much more do you need? Oh, it was, you know, it was yeah, and, and looking at the article itself, I mean, that's that's one of those big, thick, like, fabric ones from a hotel, it looks like. You know, not like yeah, that's two in one. That's yeah. a. <coughs> it's not where you have like the, the shower curtain, right? The plastic clear the liner, and then the li- yeah, right. the, the liner, and then the decorative. <laughs> no, this is an all in one. This is a thick <laughs> right. So yeah, I they paid I, the extra two bucks at the WalMarts. Yep, and got themselves. And a you good notice curtain. too, he's got the gloves on, so he's got his fingerprints covered. This dude is just you know he doesn't want. The camera to pick up who he is. Yeah. So, so I mean, he's he's thought this out. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to give him some credit. He's thought it out for as crazy as this appears. And I, I'm willing to bet a liquor store in Lincoln, Nebraska, on a Tuesday is probably lousy with cash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On a Tuesday. Nebraska, you know, Mum's Liquor. <laughs> Conveniently located there at 26th and an O Street. <laughs> right. <laughs> Parking's free. It's free parking right there by the Bigly Wiggly. I, I don't know if that Yeah, works. but again, it, this just, uh, I, I love the weirdness of this overall. Just Yeah. In lieu of cape. <laughs> in truth. I will. Truth. I will. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, come, would he come in all sort of like Boris Karloff? Or the, 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 who was it? Not Boris Karloff. Who played Dracula in the old movies? Oh, Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi. <laughs> uh, he, he come in. <laughs> I will have all your money. Give me your cash. <laughs> He's got to do the hand thing. Yes. Yes. I implore you <laughs> to empty thine register. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, now that would be fun. I guess if I'm going to hold up a liquor store, yeah, I want to go all in on the old school vampire. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. It's yeah. like the white makeup, the fangs, the yeah. slick back hair, all of it. Yeah. Greetings. I'm here to rob you. <laughs> you have to invite me to your <laughs> shop. <laughs> Am I truly welcome? <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as a nod to what we do in the shadows, as you're leaving, just go, Bat! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Bat! <laughs> 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 I 
Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Side note. That is one of the funniest fucking shows. Right? Like, ever. I swear to God, I cannot get anybody to watch it. It's so ridiculous. Brilliant. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Counterpoint your side note. I could watch Matt Berry read the fucking yellow pages and be thoroughly uh, entertained. Oh my god, right? And like I have a weird erection. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like was it two episodes ago he sang the theme song just for some random reason? Have you are you caught up to it? Yet? Yeah. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. I always thought it kind of went, no, it wasn't, yeah, okay, he did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, he did. And it was, yeah, it was the. Your the, dad. Where, it wasn't the normal one. Yeah, it's not your dad, the original, original right. version. Yeah. It was a re- free and version. he did a terrible version of it, too. Oh, it's, it's like horrible. He, he talk sang through the yeah. whole thing. Like, he's not a bad singer. No, he's like, really talented. He's a talented artist. Yes. <laughs> And I, I couldn't understand it. I, I mean, I watched all of it, but I, I didn't understand what was going on. But I'm like, what was that one about? That oh, wasn't the train one. <laughs> no. Was it the one where they got Sean the job at the railroad? That's what I thought. No. Or was it the very first one where they were at the um, the the offices when Guillermo got the new job? No, it was recent. It was like, the, like two episodes I, ago. I thought so. Oh, but it was so weird. But anyways, yes, that's yeah. that's how I would end it. Just leaving you there going, but <laughs> <laughs> I love that show and I have to like I have to like squelch my enthusiasm for it. I'm scared that Sarah's gonna leave me. <laughs> uh, it, it's no, okay, so we both good. think it's hilarious. I love it. And I love him on Crapopolis. Yes. Yes. But, like, it's a same <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, that's how he would be. Oh, oh fuck. Snuffbox. Dude, okay, so last... <laughs> was that last year? Uh, Tom was in town with Rick. Yeah. For the reunion. And mm-hmm. we, were, we were at my house with nothing to do. Like, we had nothing on the agenda. I'm like, all right, you guys got to watch this show. Like, first of all, let me ask you... Like, what made you think that I would unleash this on on my friends, on these two guys? Because it, <laughs> because it was you two guys. I'm like, all right. So, Snuffbox is sort of a um, it's a comedy show. It only lasted like six episodes. Yeah, and um, there's barely any plot to it. Mostly, no. it's just skits <laughs> with a yeah with a loose thread. Yeah, barely. So I thought, of all the people I know, you two fuckwits would be the only ones that could appreciate this. And next thing I know, we watched all of it. Like, I don't think we moved. Like, no. we just sat there all afternoon and watched just show. ate it. Oh, more. Uh. Oh, my God. But that, that's the show that made me fall in love with Matt Berry. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Snuffbox people find it. Yes, and he sings the theme song too. Yep. Which, God damn it, now it's stuck in my head and it's not going to go anywhere for weeks. <laughs> the theme song shows up just not at the beginning. It's just all the all time. All the time. Yes. There's um. They do it like a dance to it. Mm-hmm. Like he has backup dancers while he's singing it in the yeah. middle of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a point, yeah, in one of the episodes where there's like a whole dance routine yeah. where it's like um, the opening of Peter Gunn. Not Peter Gunn. James Gunn. <laughs> Damn it. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, the new. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> this is a good one. Here we go. <laughs> Something else. I googled Matt Berry. No, I didn't really. I was looking at the news article. <laughs> it's not my script. Oh, okay. I'm with you. I'm with All you. Right. <clears throat> Woman calls cops over. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to hear real quick. CD 101. Mm. 
Woman calls cops over inferior meth. Word of the wise, 911 is for emergencies, not to report your drug dealer for selling you a bad batch of meth. Sarah Harris, age 34, twice made open line, air quote, open line, calls to the police emergency number, prompting an officer to make a house call to ensure that everyone was okay. This is according to a police report obtained by The Smoking Gun. Harris told the cops that her meth was, quote, not what it was supposed to be, unquote, explaining that the drug left her feeling like she was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Harris's next mistake was turning the meth over to the police, who charged her with meth possession, which carries a maximum 30-month prison term. She can tack that onto her previous meth conviction, as well as raps for theft, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, resisting and operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. Sarah's a catch. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, <clears throat> it's Sarah with an H, by the way. Oh, yes. Okay. Context. Hashtag yeah. context. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I love that you picked this article. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. First mm-hmm. off, the, the mugshot. I, I shared the mugshot on Facebook today, yeah. if you can track that down. But it, it's not your typical mugshot with like the measurements of how tall you are on the back. Yeah. It's like a cop walked by laughing with his phone, like, hey, look up. Yeah. And just took a <laughs> right. picture of her. Like it's in a school gym. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to believe this. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But the the fact that you know she didn't go directly to the Better Business Bureau about her her drug dealer. Well, she we to, know of. She went to nine one one. Yeah. Like, how yeah. bad is your meth that you're going to call the cops and potentially an ambulance to squeal on your dealer? Yeah. That's fucked up. But and again, uh, we again we brought this up off air. But kudos to Indiana for like showing up. Yeah, you meth have, capital apparently, <laughs> meth capital of the country. Yeah, that's what I hear. Okay, you hear that from people in Ohio, I bet, because we don't want that badge of distinction, right? Hmm. We ex- it's an export, right? I'm sure. <laughs> Where do you think they get it? <laughs> Yeah, this but. is amazing. And and I love that she, you know, she called 911 twice mm-hmm. about shitty meth and gave it to the cops knowing she's got, like, a history of her arrest behind her. Yeah. That had to be terrible, terrible meth that she got. Yeah, right? I mean, I mean you're on her. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, there were chunks of magic eraser in it when I snorted it. So, obviously, he's cutting it with something. Mm-hmm. There was rubber glue cement. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's play around sand and a dirty diaper yeah. in my mouth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Used kitty litter <laughs> in confetti. <laughs> That's called party meth. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Right. Birthday myth, birthday myth, gender reveal myth. Oh, it, it's got pink confetti or blue confetti. Boom, it's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it's an underweight. Oh, <laughs> I mean, who hasn't wanted to turn their dealer into the police? But. Yeah, there are better ways to do it. You know, like uh, just say, "Hey, man!" Like at this apartment at three twenty-five Northwest Street, apartment G. Mm-hmm. I think there's some kids in there, and maybe a pedophile. And then you just kind of hang up and wait and see what happens. Yeah, let nature take its course. Right, let the legal system do its thing. Not bring a cop to my house and let me yeah. show him the shitty meth that I bought. Yeah, and that I took. Yeah. So, 
Again, I, lesson learned, I guess. I mean, <laughs> she's probably out by now. Probably <laughs> out by when now, but April? I'm betting lesson not learned. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would give it maybe two years, <laughs> and we'll be talking about Sarah Harris again. I know we've talked about this, but Peggy, if you're listening, please, we need your help. We need a where are they now? Yeah. Ooh. To follow up, like, what about what happened to that guy that was 90% of his body covered in tattoos? Like, remember, he, he split his hand. Oh, the guy with a split hand in yeah. South America. Yeah. Yeah. What's he up to now? Is he like working at a Dollar General? Wow. Oh. What happened to him? Yeah. We need to know. Peggy, please, we implore you, do our homework for us. <laughs> Dollar General, Attorney General, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. I, I wish that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is, because he's South American. <laughs> I don't think that's a deal breaker anymore. I mean, you've got a potentially a pedophile that was nominated. <clears throat> it was just, it was mm-hmm. But we're not going to talk about politics. No. At all. Because it's <laughs> like employment, etc. And on. <laughs> but yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but again, solid article. I, I loved everything about her. Um, just the the pure unmitigated balls on her to like. I, I bet it was a very aggressive call. Like you send a car right now. Oh yeah, because I want you to test this meth with your test kit. This dude screwed me over. <laughs> <laughs> I can still feel my teeth. This g- will not stand. Right. This is half baby powder at least. <laughs> right. I'm still spitting the confetti out of my... It's not even my birthday. I didn't pay for party mix. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> And, and I thought, isn't a heart attack a fairly common side effect of meth? I don't know. Hmm. I think. I, I mean, don't, like get, I, I, don't get me. I am not going to research this. I'm not going to look it up. I'm not going to try any more meth. Um, hang on. What do you think? No. It's not? Okay. You it's just kind of get really sleepy and your teeth fall out? No, not so sleepy. Okay. Amped up? Yeah. Okay. So maybe a heart attack within the realm of possibility. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a roller coaster high and then low. Okay, so previous meth conviction wraps for theft, criminal mischief, disorderly contact, resisting and operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. I'm going to assume that Sarah's not a vision of health to begin with. You know, maybe the meth was just a, a catalyst. That, that kind of pushed her over the edge to the heart attack that was going to happen eventually. Judging purely on appearances. <laughs> based on the picture that okay. may or may not have been snapped in a high school gym. Of an iPhone at a high school gym does not appear to be the picture of health. Um, no. And I, I, I all struggles want to, to run the mile. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that I don't, but okay, true. Young enough, what was she like? 34, 34, 34 yeah. Um, yeah, while a health problem may already exist, my she, while she may already be leaning towards a, a, a future mm-hmm. of, of a heart issue. <laughs> I, I would I would say that yeah the 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 uh, the addition of, of a methamphetamine to her system probably exacerbated right her the path she's already on lifestyle. so I, I am going to counter you on one point um, based on the color of paint in her picture uh, this is a high school pool. Not a gymnasium. <laughs> Plus, um, with the, with the uh, small amount of art we can get from her T-shirt, this is an in utero Nirvana mm. T-shirt. Yeah. Not a Nevermind. Right. 
which means that she's been listening to Nirvana for a while. Yeah. You know, it, it takes people a couple listens to get past Nevermind into their later work, which she's doing drugs on the regular. True. Mm hmm. They should have worn that at the fair. <laughs> <laughs> With her Van Halen mirror. <laughs> yeah. Her Van Halen, yeah. Mine was Pink Floyd, or one of Kings Island. Ooh, nice. Yes. But yeah, this was a solid pick. Um, I, I wish Sarah the best, but we're, we're gonna if we can ever get a hold of Peggy, we're gonna reach out to you at some point in your future and see how you're doing because we're we're worried. You know, pick up some celery. Maybe like jog once in a while again. Brisk walk, a brisk walk. Yeah, I'm in a glass house, but I'm also not doing meth, so mm. I, I will throw a stone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for those of us who just eat poorly and are sedentary, yeah, open season. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so where we're at the end of November right now. Um, yes. Next time we get together, we're going to talk about Elf. We're going to talk about all things Christmas. Yes. Yes. The holiday. That's the holiday bums. extravaganza. Extravaganza. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can I, I say that? Is it copyrighted? No. What? You can't copyright an inflection, right? Is that company still in existence? I don't know. Does it still happen? No. Oh. No. Extravaganza. Admission is free. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The, the Lausch building at the Ohio State Fair. The Lausch building. Thousands of vendors. They don't do that anymore. No, it's not a thing. That's unfortunate. That was truly an extravagant. I loved the. I bought my first CD player there. It was $400. <laughs> right. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> I, I bought it a pop up at the Ohio State Fair yeah. <laughs> at Extravaganza for four hundred fucking dollars. Jesus! And I owned zero CDs when I bought it, but I knew I'm like, this is the future, right? Thank this you, is, Columbia House. It's 1986. <laughs> no, I went from there to Gold Circle and used my discount. There you go. And I bought Bon Jovi's "Slippery When Wet" and Peter Gabriel "So." Really. Yes. How funny. Uh, so was one of my first CDs. Really? Yeah. No kidding. My first two CDs were uh, Sgt. Pepper's. Good choice. And Peter Gabriel. So. Okay, so let me ask you this. Right. When um, when CDs first came out, mm -hmm. did you hear like the, the murmurs and rumors that at the end of Sgt. Pepper's, that was the first time you could hear the dog whistle that John Lennon blew to his dog? Because of like the the extended range on CDs versus I LPs and cassettes, heard that. this okay. is the first time I'm hearing about that. Yeah, oh, shit. Okay, I, I didn't mean to ruin it for you. No, but like when to. when CDs were first coming out, yeah. that was the rumor that because the impedance was like the the range was wide open on CDs mm -hmm. compared to LPs, which are like squashed to fit, right? Yeah. It, right at the beginning of um, the very last track where they're repeating never could be any other way, never could be any other way, you know? Mm -hmm. At the very, very beginning of that, you can hear a dog whistle on the CD version, but you couldn't on the LP or cassette. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I'll have to revisit that. Yes. It could be bullshit, but I remember hearing that. And I was not the biggest Beatle fan, but I owned Sgt. Pepper on CD. So I could, and yes, I listened to the whole thing. I'm like, oh, dog whistle. And again, I had to. Did it, you hear? Yeah. Okay. It could be on the album too. I didn't, I didn't have a point of reference. Yeah. Well, I have neither of those pieces of media. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on LP, I think. So. If I remember, I'll, I'll try and oh, listen I, to like the. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We save CDs. Yeah, I got sorry. Pepper still. But CD. like right at the very, very end, like after the the like the cacophony, mm -hmm. and, and it goes quiet for a second, and then that mm -hmm. that, that loop, that loop of never could be any other way, never could be any mm -hmm. other way. Right before that, there's a dog whistle. So try it out. See if you can get there. Hmm. Is it a day in the what life? Is that the last track? It is. 
And this is with no internet either. I'm pulling Shit. this right out of my ass. Isn't that that like the orchestration where it goes? Yeah, it builds, that's a day in the life, right? Is that the days of Yeah, yeah. Between yeah, day in the life. Okay. I don't know if it's day in the life, but it's it ends on that crescendo. Yes, and then and it might be a day in the life, and then something else and something like they they yeah. squish together There's the a, songs at the very uh, end. Yeah. Um. Yeah, in that break between when the orchestration stops and that loop starts, there's a dog whistle. And when, in 1986, you, you, people saying, like, this is the first time you can hear it because of, hmm. you know, the, the, the bandwidth on the CD was wider, so it picked up the, yeah. that, that high pitch that you couldn't capture on LP or cassette. Which, in, you know, in hindsight... Is bullshit because CDs were squished way down, and the LP is more like your. It's the more honest, yeah, your representation your of what was on the tape. Yes, because it was all analog. You went yeah. from the recording to the you know the the booth to the LP. It, yeah, there was no computer interface yeah, that no would it. It didn't understand it. It just was right. cut out or it, it didn't squish the file down to an MP3. Yeah. Also, so. I don't know, but I, it got me to buy Sergeant Pepper. I Peppers. question that. You have the LP. Yes. I have the CD. Okay. Sometime between now and next time we're here. We'll we try this. Okay. We need to compare. Okay. All right. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But anyways, that, that just reminded me of that. Yeah. Um, after that, I, I exploded. Uh, I, I bought... They were everywhere. Like, when my... Uh, when my tax return check came that year in yeah. 1986, I was working at Gold Circle, right? <laughs> and my dad said, you should invest that in a CD, you know, like, you know, better, <laughs> great, blah, blah, blah. And I well, went to, I there's a store on Morse Road that's called CD Jungle. Yep. By 71. Yeah. And they had, they had like a better variety than anybody else. They had all better this weird. RTO. Stuff. Or, yeah. So. Um, better than Buzzers? Uh, Buzzers was like, you great. LPs, buzzards, yes. Great vinyl buzzards does. Their CD section was as big as this table. Though. Yeah. But CD, uh, CD Jungle, um, I bought like all the old Talking Heads albums from the 70s. Wow, well, yeah. That I had never even seen them in that format before. Like, oh, fuck. Which ate up my check. So, like, I came home with this little stack. Like, here's my hundred fifty dollars, Dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and CDs. Yeah, like you said, jokes on me. <laughs> what was the the Talking Heads album? Was it seventy seven that they they re, they produ- they released on video disc in a format oh, that hadn't ex- quite existed yet? Yeah, I think you're right. That David Byrne was like, no, we're gonna do it on this format yeah, as well. Yeah, that sounds so right. So that when technology catches up, yes. You'll be able to click on a file, and like click, click was a thing, right? But you'll be able to open a file on this, on this disc. I think you're right, yeah, because it was videos. fucking gigantic too. Yeah. It was like an inch thick. <laughs> it was an inch, yeah, it was like an inch thick, and like a, 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 a good inch bigger than like what the those video discs yes. were. It, the only person, speaking of old technology, the only person I knew that owned a video disc, like a laser disc, yeah. Teresa Bruce. Teresa Bruce did. Yep. yep. <laughs> Watched so many movies of her. Yes, house. like her dad was like right there on the the cusp yeah. of technology. Yeah. Yes. And it was cool because like you, like half it was almost like an eight track. Yes, yeah, like halfway through you had to get you know, the flip <laughs> and eject the disc, and it was in like in a in like a sleeve. Yeah. In a, in a, uh, like a like a case. Yeah. It's like a big plastic. It was an eight track. Shove it back in. Yeah. Pull it out and then flip it over. Yep. And shove it back down. Oh, that was amazing. It was so cool. Yes, it was louder than fuck too. It, it, you know, not the oh, yeah. not the quiet little door that a DVD the, drive or something. This thing was clunk clunk. No, like I don't, it I don't. spit the plastic out yeah. at you. <laughs> like you were doing something. It was a very space 1999. Very like, much. So. We're activating a yes. thing. But something anyways, happening. so Christmas we will we'll talk about drinking while watching Elf. Yeah. Uh, your first Christmas back in Columbus where you have relatives close by so we can like tap into that shit Oof, yeah yeah good luck yeah we'll, mm. we'll do a very Christmas episode and yeah um Studio 35 is open Christmas day I still think we should try and work our way over I can there. convince the cook yeah I'm there yeah well yeah I'm there anyways I think okay yeah 
but that was always the hard part like trying to find some place open on Christmas day like bars yeah you know, that when was we were the younger. thing back in the day Polo's was always open yeah uh, and it was like us and all these like loners there were there were no groups there but us yeah. it was all like people just sitting by themselves that had no relatives or family or whatever this is before like support groups were a thing <laughs> Like the divorcees wouldn't talk to each other. Right, yes. We're all going no to Yahoo groups. Shit do <laughs> yeah. Or AOL groups. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but uh, that was the thing, man. We'd, we'd hang out with our parents. We'd get burned out on being with family. We'd go find each other mm-hmm. and, and sit around and drink. God, maybe we did have a problem. That's that's for another show. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> But anyways, um, thank you again for being with us. This is our 57th time together. Yay, us. We're coming up on five years, but again, um, we will talk to you. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have it posted before Christmas, Mm -hmm. and we'll spend the holidays with you. Yeah. And then we're going to close with more music by Tim, and that starts now. Happy Thanksgiving, bitches. Happy Thanksgiving, you filthy animal. You filthy animal. (laughs) And good night, Emily. Good night, Emily.